What's going on guys? My name is Jeff and this is Mad Hatter's Reef and today we're talking about salinity in reef tanks. What's going on guys? We're back with another video and if you're new to what we're doing here, this is where I talk about everything reef tank related. So if you love reef tanks like I do, make sure you smash that subscribe button. All right, folks, so today is Sunday, and you know what that means, a brand new Matt and Hatter's Reef video just for you. And we're talking about a subject that is very, very important to the saltwater aquarium game, and that is salinity. And many of us get wrapped up in calcium, alkalinity. We also get wrapped up in magnesium. What are my silicate levels? Not so often you hear people talk about salinity. We do actually have saltwater aquariums. So salinity should be an important topic to talk about. And that's what we're going to do in today's video so let's get after it. Now before we get into what affects your salinity level of your reef aquarium or even how to measure your salinity, let's actually define what salinity is. Salinity is defined as the concentration of dissolved salts in water, usually expressed in parts per thousand by weight. Now a misconception that happens quite often with salinity is specific gravity. Now specific gravity is defined as the ratio of the density of a substance to the density of a standard, usually water for a liquid or solid and air for a gas. Huh? And to make specific gravity a little bit more confusing, the density of the liquid, which is water, because that's what we're measuring when we're measuring the specific gravity of a saltwater aquarium, will change with the temperature of the water because water when it's warm it expands when water is cool it contracts so the density of that liquid is going to change with the temperature so let's say you have a water changing station in your basement that's where you're filtering your water you're mixing it with salt and you're using specific gravity to measure that water and let's say it's winter time it's a little bit chilly down there Let's say that water temperature sits at around 60 degrees. Your specific gravity reading of that water would be 1.026 specific gravity. So you decide that your water is good, ready to be put into your tank. And just before you put it into your tank, you obviously realize that that water is sitting at 60 degrees. So you're going to want to heat it up before you put it in your tank because that's a very huge fluctuation in temperature and that wouldn't be a good thing to be putting in your tank. So you take your water and you heat it up to 80 degrees and just before you add the water to the reef tank you check the specific gravity one more time of the water to find that it is now 1.023. When taking specific gravity measurements it's important to correct for the temperature to get a true reading. As a rule of thumb, specific gravity will change by 0 0.0003 points per 10 degrees Fahrenheit. And if this all sounds like a big mess to you, it's probably safe to say that specific gravity isn't the way that you should go about measuring water for your reef tank and maybe salinity is the better road for you. Let's say you have that same situation as before where you have your water station in the basement. It's cool down there. The water typically sits at about 60 degrees. It's not heated. When you measure your salinity, it's going to be 35 parts per thousand if it's mixed properly. You take that same water, you heat it up to 80 degrees. It's going to measure 35 parts per thousand. It's exactly the same. And this is really what creates the argument between salinity and specific gravity. And to be completely honest with you, I've done it both ways over the years and I've had pretty much the same results. So if you're new to the hobby, don't let specific gravity keep you up at night. Don't create a bunch of charts so you can map out the world's specific gravity and convert it with temperatures and have scientific calculators out 
go ahead and just measure that salinity and you're going to be just fine. Now, before we jump into how I go about measuring my salinity currently, I want to talk about some of the things that can have a impact on the salinity within your reef tank. And hands down, the biggest contributor to fluctuations within the salinity of a reef tank is evaporation and how you go about dealing with it. When I first started in the hobby, I did not have a auto top off. And what that forced me to do was to take buckets of water and pour it into my reef tank. And it wasn't very scientific. And that caused for a lot of fluctuations in my salinity. I just kind of eyeballed where I knew the water level needed to be and I would pour water into the tank until it got to that point. And sometimes I put too much in, sometimes I realized an hour or two later that I didn't put enough in. It really was a big pain in the butt. And I'm gonna tell you, if you don't have a auto top off, it is one of the most important pieces of equipment that is going to change your life when it comes to reef keeping, especially if you're just starting out in the hobby. Essentially what a auto top off is, is a little computer that is constantly reading the level of the water in a chamber of your sump. It could even be a display tank. And sometimes they do this via a float switch or even a optical level sensor. And it's measuring that water level and once that water level starts to drop down a little bit, it will kick on the pump and it will put fresh water from a reservoir into your sump or into the display tank. And ultimately what this affords you is very small fluctuations in your salinity of your tank. When it comes to testing salinity of your reef tank, it's probably just as important as, if not more important than testing your alkalinity, testing your calcium, your magnesium, phosphates, nitrates. It really should be part of your weekly testing that happens for your tank. And some of the best equipment that I have seen as of late are these digital meters that are coming to market that help you measure salinity, specific gravity. They are very easy to use and almost take all the pain of measuring specific gravity, measuring salinity, and just make it easy. But not many of them can be calibrated. And that's where a refractometer comes into play. They've been around in the hobby for years. They can be calibrated. And hands down has been my preferred method of measuring specific gravity and salinity with my reef tanks for a very, very long time. Mostly due to the fact that they are super easy to calibrate. And the funny thing about that is I was really, really intimidated by a refractometer for a very long time. I didn't understand it. But once I got one and learned how to use it, it became one of my most favorite ways of measuring salinity. And if you can't afford a refractometer, if you can't afford one of those new digital meters that measure salinity and specific gravity, there's always a good old hydrometer. Not that they are the most accurate. And the problem that I have with them is you can't calibrate them. As long as you have something that you can cross-reference it to make sure that it's accurate, they do serve a purpose in measuring salinity. All of the tools that we've talked about measuring salinity are very important, but hands down, the most important tool for maintaining salinity is an auto top-off. If you do not have an auto top-off, you do not know what you're missing and it will change the reef keeping experience once you get one. All right, folks, that's going to do it for today's video. I want to thank you for joining me. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. But before we jump off, I want to know what you are testing. Are you testing your salinity? Are you testing your specific gravity? How often are you testing your water and what are you testing it with? Leave a comment down below and I will be picking a winner to win a $25 gift certificate to mystery reef box that's my way of saying thank you for being a subscriber hitting the thumbs up on each and every video and leaving a comment down below that's going to do it for today i want to thank you guys for joining me but don't worry there's plenty more mad hatter reef videos to go around